Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and today I'll be reading a scary mystic listener by me. So let's get into it. Well, you and Skirmish have been together for two years now, and things have progressed rather smoothly. You couldn't help but say that things were exciting. You loved every moment being with him, being his partner and his loved one. He trusted Skirmish with everything, and so he trusted you as well. That you of you bearing yourself to each other. Vulnerabilities, feelings, and all. And it allowed yourselves to bond for the two of you to achieve the feeling of love. Feeling it in a way that you never thought possible. It was like your hearts were intertwined. Like the two of you were two halves of the same. Like you were meant to be. And looking at the picture of Skirmish, you couldn't help but smile and look back at her dress. He had been on a mission for three days, sent there by Talnari to help him with something, and Kusanelli asked him to go so he couldn't just say no to her, and that's why he ended up going in the first place. And he was coming back today. So... We were trying to get ready for him, putting on a dress, doing your makeup, and focusing on every single detail. Nothing could be a mess, and everything had to be just perfect. And that's exactly when you heard the bell ring. Oh, it must be Skirmish, he thought. And with your dress in hand, you were rushing down the stairs only to trip over it and fall all the way from the top. Meanwhile, your lover stood outside, suitcase in hand, waiting for you to open the door until you heard the loud set echo from inside. And before you knew it, Skirmish was inside the house, pale and trembling. Why on? Why on? Are you alright? Are you okay? He asked over and over until he spotted you. And that's when his heart broke. And you could tell that something was very wrong. And he had to intervene. Quickly. Or else he might lose you. Ayan, stay with me. He said. Holding you in his arms as he sprinted towards the hospital. He was trying his best to keep you stable, to keep you awake, but no matter what he did, he couldn't keep himself from collapsing inside. Tears dripping down his cheeks and onto your face. He didn't know how this happened, but a part of him is telling him that it's all his fault, that he should have been there, that he should have helped you. I'm so sorry, my aunt. I am. I really am. He cried over and over. But soon, you had lost your consciousness, and his words were blurring in the haze until you could not register them anymore. Everything that he was saying gone red out of your ear. He waited outside your room, pacing back and forth, hoping that you would come out right. That was his only concern. And as he saw mothers, or was it babies coming in sick, of pregnant women, of a couple alone, he looked at those families and hoped that they too would not have to suffer. He hated the humans, but they couldn't help but hope that everyone would be alright, and most importantly, you. As soon as the doctor got out, Skirmish ran towards him. Hey, what's going on? How is she? The doctor looked at him solemnly, sad. You see, Mr. Skirmish, she's alright. She's perfectly fine. 
and may even be ready to go tonight. But the baby... And he froze. What? What are you talking about? He let out a dry chuckle. Nervous. The doctor looked even more nervous now, looking at him. Skirmish had no idea. And neither did you. As you can see, Master Skirmish... Your partner was pregnant when she fell. I don't know if she knew or not. But I'm telling you the news. Please, be gentle with her. We don't want her to go into a shock, the doctor said. And Skirmish nodded, though everything else about him was frozen. His face, hands, and eyes, all staring at one place in pure confusion. Meanwhile, when you woke up, Skirmish immediately went inside, just to check up on you, to see how you are doing, hoping that you are okay. He saw you there, your eyes half open as you looked at him, letting out a soft sigh. I'm fine, I promise, Skirmish. But the tears in his eyes, the way they were so fresh, and the way he continuously wiped them away, told you something else. Skira, do you know something you're not telling me? You say, giving him a firm look. But he shakes his head. He didn't want to give you that feeling just to be taken away a couple moments after. It would be evil and cruel and heartless. So all he did was hold you close. Sorrowful and sorry. And wishing that you could bear it all alone. That this would never happen to you again. You had already lost enough. Even if you didn't know it. You were carrying a life inside of you. And right now... You had lost it. Because of him, his scarelessness, and the way he wasn't there. If he was there, maybe if he had warned you, things would have been this way. But here as you are. And as you stare at him in pure confusion, just happy that you're okay, Skirmish held you with red drowned eyes, tears running down his cheeks. As he buried his face into the crook of your neck, mumbling soft apologies that he himself would never let you know the reason behind.